So I've just picked up this 2003 Suzuki DRZ400. Um, wasn't intending it to be a project, but it's becoming one. So we're going to dive in um, and really go the whole hog with it, add some really nice parts and make it into the ultimate adventure machine. Whew. I was meant to be going to collect it and riding it back. It's only about 30 miles. Um, it got about 10 miles down the road and broke down. It's got a couple of carb issues, or hopefully just one carb issue. Hopefully it's just got a little um, a bit of blockage in the jet. So I've ordered a new jet kit. We're gonna rip the carb off, get that cleaned out and, and everything kind of replaced or repaired. Uh, slap it back on, a couple of other quick mods, get it running, hopefully ride it in the Malay Mile and then get really stuck into making it into a wicked adventure machine that I can take green laning and on some longer trips as well. I'm so excited um, and I really want to explore the UK off-road, do some Tet trips and stuff like that. Um, the Trans Euro Trail, the Tet, for people that don't know, is a massive linked route um, of off-road trails all across Europe. Um, it looks wicked. I've been looking at it with MV for a long time now, so I'm excited to be able to get stuck in with this bike. All right, we've got some mail today. LED flasher relay, the stainless steel replacement bolts, the carburetor. I've got a fucking gasket that didn't even come in a packet, but that's for the stator cover, which is currently leaking a little bit. Hopefully that'll sort that out. And I've also got the carb rebuild kit, so new jets, um, seals for the float bowl and everything. What am I waiting for? I still need my Japanese industrial standard screwdrivers to arrive so I can dig into the carb and get all that sorted out. I'm pretty sure I'm going to strip quite a few bolts because they're notoriously soft but I've got the stainless steel replacements with the Allen heads. Um, I've got front and rear fenders coming and need to get the indicators. I've got a tail tidy coming. Hopefully that will be here this week as well. Um, yeah, better start doing a couple of bits and bobs. Okay, so I just pulled uh, the kind of front headlight cover off because we need to replace this with this one. So I'm changing the lights over to LEDs and if you don't either change the relay or add resistors in, then you're gonna get what's called hyper flash where your indicators flash way too fast. Now the reason I decided to um, just change out the relay rather than putting resistors on every indicator is because it's four times less likely to break or it's four less things to break. If I have a resistor on every single indicator riding this off-road, there's a good chance that some of those connections are gonna break or come loose. Um, whereas with this, it's designed for this bike, it's plug and play, you just swap the old one out and put the new one in and it, I think it costs about maybe £5, maybe £10, easy. And just tighten that back up and we'll be good to go. So, that's all the stock indicators off. Hey, hey, we've installed the new brake and uh, the new license plate holder. I've just taken the cable off of the old brake light, stripped the ends, and I'm just gonna reconnect them to the new brake light. The RNG kit comes with Scotch block connectors, but they've got two inputs on one end and one on the other side and I'm just not confident in them or that they're gonna be particularly waterproof. So instead what I'm doing is I'm soldering the individual ends of the wires to get them a bit thicker then I'm gonna put them through um, straight crimps and crimp them. Um, it would be a bit more flexible off-road, that's great. And um, also then I can put waterproof sleeves over the top and just make sure the whole thing's super clean, tidy and, and sealed. Full lights that the running light comes in. Okay. 
So my Japanese industry standard screwdrivers um, finally arrived. I managed to get the diaphragm um, cap off. This screw was um, semi-stripped, but managed to get it off before it stripped completely. I've got two out of the four of the screws from the float bowl out. Um, the other two are stripping pretty badly. I'm gonna have another go at them once I've sorted out everything in the diaphragm. Okay, after sticking it in the vise, I've finally got the screws out. Little nick in the casing here, but nothing to worry about too much. Get stuck in. So, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's loads of horrible gunk down the bottom here. Um, which is probably what was blocking the jet. draining the oil so I can uh, put the new gasket on. As always, almost dropped the bolt in, saved it. Oil relatively contained. Just yesterday picked up uh, a manual handheld impact driver um, that you hit with a hammer. Um, these were an absolute bastard though. You can see the previous owner has already started to strip them. Um, the impact driver, so really impressed with that. Yeah, I'm gonna pull the stator cover off, change the gasket because it's leaking, and then hopefully get the car back in, fill her up with oil. She might be good to go. All right, <laughs> went for the lying down approach. It was much easier to get the cover off, um, which is off now. The gasket's out. So the problems continue. The reason why that gasket was leaking was not because uh, the gasket was faulty, it's because someone has scored the surface, the mating surface on the engine. I'm not sure if you can see it that well. This is also pretty battered, but I think these are the main issue and that's why it's uh, dripping down here, getting through the gasket and leaking. I'm not gonna be able to sand this down, so I'm gonna get some gasket sealant and hope that that is enough with the new gasket to seal it up. We will see. All right, so it's back together. We'll see you all. It's working. Woo! Big fiddle with the idle adjustment screw and it is running. Oh, sweet. the jubilation of getting the bike back together and restarted was pretty short-lived. Um, once I fired it up I realised that it's leaking out of the starter gear cover. When I put the cover back on I realised that the o-ring was sort of damaged. Um, got a new one, probably the most expensive part going on the bike. Uh, hopefully you're going to change it now and everything will be fine. So as you can see this one was pretty damaged. And this is what's been leaking here. Okay, so the DRZ is back together. It's running pretty well, a little bit lean. I've got an extended fuel mixture screw on the way. I don't want to pull the carbon, just the fuel mixture until that is here. And then once that's installed, I'll be able to do it on the fly without pulling the carb. But for now, it's good enough. It's ready to ride. I've got a few more mods I want to do in the future, but I'm just raring to go and get out on the lanes. So stay tuned for that first ride video, which is coming soon. I've also got some awesome adventures planned for this bike, including some overnight camping trips all off-road and potentially a trip to Ireland later on in the year so make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for all the developments with this bike and some wicked adventures thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon Woo! first crash Woo! look how high my legs are look at that Oh, oh, nice view. Oh, again.